Welcome to Friday, July the 3rd. I'm Pastor Jim Krieger from Holy Cross Lutheran Church and School here in Saginaw, Michigan. And I bring you first uh, the warmest wishes for a wonderful celebration of our national independence that many are beginning today and through this weekend. I pray that you are able to enjoy that time away from work, that time of renewal with family, a time of relaxation, but always under the shield of safety wherever you may go. To begin this weekend celebration of independence in our nation, we begin with God's word that teaches us of an even more important independence, Christian independence through the cross of Jesus. So we begin with the words of Galatians 5 verse 1. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Those who believe in the absolute fulfillment of the law of God for salvation speak out against the gospel of God's grace in Christ and accuse all those who rejoice in the liberty we have through the completed work of Jesus on the cross as a dangerous teaching and belief that leads to an immoral lifestyle and a license to sin. But this is a serious misunderstanding of the gospel of God's grace, and it is indeed a gross misinterpretation of the teachings of God given to St. Paul, who was Christ's chosen apostle to the Gentiles, and through whom we have received this beautiful mystery of the church, the gospel of Jesus, the very body of Christ himself. Paul taught that this treasured freedom that we have in Jesus is ours by God's grace for all who look to Jesus as God's given source of forgiveness and salvation. It is this very liberty that we have in the finished work of Jesus on his cross that has released us from our former legalistic yoke of bondage to sin and set us free from the eternal consequences and curses of the law. In Matthew 5:48, Jesus teaches, You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. God's law demands perfection, an unattainable standard of moral perfection and an outward display of living. But because of our old sinful nature that we have inherited from Adam and Eve, we will always fall short of that standard of perfection. And... Therefore, we have a need, a desperate need for Jesus as our Savior, who paid the price of our sins on the cross to set us free from that condemnation of the law. And so Christ was sent to fulfill the law for us on our behalf. Jesus lived a perfect life under God's law so that he could attain for us that perfect standard and pay the price for our sins through his death, so that the fulfillment of the law results in the righteousness of Christ given to us by the gift of the Spirit. Now, in order to pay the price for sin, Jesus had to suffer and die in our place. But having lived that perfect life that was not deserving of death, God the Father raised him from the dead and exalted him, giving him the name that was above every name so that all who believe in the saving name of Jesus and his works for us have life, eternal life, his resurrected life, his new born-again life, the life that is promised to all who possess that gift of saving faith in him. So Christian liberty is not a dangerous teaching like the legalists would have us to believe. Legalism seeks to change the old nature from the outside and we must be the ones who obey God's perfect, unachievable law. But our own strength will fail every time. It must fail because our original sinful nature is always hostile towards God. So the humble believer who walks not in his own strength, but in the strength of the Spirit and in truth, will always yield to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, who works that new life in us, the righteousness of Christ, so that over time we discover there is a greater work within us, the work of the Spirit, 
that creates an inner discipline that seeks to obey the laws of God, not for our salvation, but out of glory to him. So this born-again child of God through baptism discovers that these righteous requirements of God's law are being fulfilled through the work of the Spirit, not under threat, but by the grace of God. How wonderful it is to discover this liberty that we have in Jesus Christ, who has, by his own death and resurrection, set us free from the yoke and bondage to sin. The Spirit outpoured into our life transforms us every day in this new life in Christ into the very image and likeness of Jesus. So may we stand firm at the beginning of this holiday weekend not in a national freedom first but in a Christian freedom that must supersede all that we ever say or do. And in this Christian freedom we are reminded not to entangle ourselves with any yoke to sin or slavery to sin again, but to rejoice in the Christian freedom we have through faith in Jesus, so that through the powerful indwelling of the Spirit, we are given the strength to live our lives according to God's law in that same freedom, so that others may know us as children of God and know the freedom for which Christ has set us free. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that I have been set free by Christ and am no longer under that bondage and curse to the condemnation of the law alone. Thank you that through the Holy Spirit's work, I am enabled to live my life first for my Heavenly Father, and then for others, and then for myself, avoiding all selfish desires and pursuits. Continue to work in me and through me so that I may live a life that is pleasing to you, a life that glorifies your holy name, a life that knows and believes I have been set free not by my works, but by God's grace through faith in Christ Jesus alone. A work that was finished for me on Calvary, so that I may live my life as a forgiven child of God, free to live according to the law of God, not for my own salvation, but that others may know Jesus in me and the works that flow from saving faith in him, my personal Lord and Savior from sin. Be with all who travel this weekend. Give them the spirit of wisdom that they may make good choices for all those around them and not live recklessly that could only bring and cause harm to others. May our Christian freedom not be shown in freedom in this world, but in the freedom that belongs to us through faith in Jesus. Freedom to live that every word and every action brings glory to God and celebrates the freedom we have in Christ for the salvation of all. Bless and keep us, Father, throughout this weekend that we may join together again in worship safely as we do this coming Sunday. But for those of us that gather, we celebrate that freedom that is found through word and sacrament alone and not anywhere in the world. Bless and keep us, Father, for the freedom for which you have set us free in Christ, and in his, his precious name that we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As always, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and in the precious name of Jesus give you his peace and the freedom that belongs to all who commit their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. God's peace and safety once again as we begin a national holiday.